and all right guys what is the story happy 420 um today is friday guys and uh, you're listening to 420 news with uh your news anchor martin condon and uh 420 news is brought to you by uh martin's world <laughs> um guys hope you're all well out there um it's 420 and uh it is friday so it's a celebration you know for fridays so oh uh, yeah the, the green screen is making the bottle go disappear see through <laughs> But I don't know if you can, yeah, you can most likely see this on here, but uh, it is um, Jameson Bong. Yes, keeping it in, uh, keeping it Irish and keep it green. <laughs> oh, that looks cool, that's a see-through. Uh, but um, yeah, guys, hope you're nice and blazed out there. Um, hope uh, your week has been good and I uh, hope you have a nice weekend planned ahead. Um I know I have uh, a few bits and pieces to do in the news today. Uh, we're going to be going from Spain to Mexico to America to Malaysia to New Zealand, back to the UK, and then we're going to finish up in Ireland with a little PSA brought to you as well uh, along the way. So um, to get things cracking, guys, in Spain, um, the Spanish authorities over have, um, yeah, they've uh, found some... Um, why isn't that there now? Hang on one second. Do, do, do. So I have, uh, let's hope this happens anyway. Yeah, I think this might work. Um, but anyway, in Spain, um, the authorities over there have uh, seized 30 tons of hash there um, over, over during the week. So this was uh, an operation that was carried out there over the course of four days. And it basically saw like uh, the authorities uh, see stopping four boats, and they found thirty tons of hash. That's a lot of hash, like. Um, they say that this hash is uh, this seizure was going to be one of the biggest ever uh, made on sea, um, by the authorities over there in Spain. So, uh, you know, well done to them guys, I suppose. But meanwhile, you know, Spain has a kind of a, a thriving uh, cannabis scene anyway. I know it's somewhat illegal and things like that, but um, yeah, it's just it's strange uh, that this is kind of yeah what's going on over there. But the guys who got caught in this anyway, they say they're a part of uh, the the world's largest uh, hash smuggling operation that gets carried out uh, uh, by sea. Um, it's a Bulgarian organization, um, so it's not even run by Spanish people. <laughs> and there was nine people arrested uh, in this seizure, and uh, there was. Bulgarians and Russians uh, in the mix there of those nine people. So um, I have a little video there that I'm going to play for you and uh, fingers crossed this goes well. I had a little bit of a hiccup trying to play a video there last week for you and it caused all sorts of issues. Uh, it caused lags in the video and the sound wouldn't even play. So um, fingers crossed guys. Blaze one up there for me. Um, so I uh, just transition on over there after this video and see how we go. Envy out there, guys. <laughs> Quite intense music as well that they've uh, chosen to go for here. Hopefully you were able to see that out there. Um, it looks like you were here on my side anyway. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the sound went good there for you as well. Um, I can't see your comments coming in here uh, on my side. Um, so if, Chris Wallace, if you are trying to tell me... Um, give me one second, I turn off this guy. Shush up. Um, Chris Wallace, who are you, man? Get off my screen. <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, in, in other news in Spain, you know, so while we have the, the authorities on one hand going out there, like carrying out a massive raid like that, um, you have other people in Spain, you know, sensible people with their head 
you know, screwed on correctly. Um, you have this uh, lady here, um, goes by the name, and I apologize now if I butcher your name, I really do. Um, it's Joshun uh, Garosup. Um, so she's a member of uh, Congress of Deputies there in uh, the, the Spanish uh, Parliament or whatever government. And um, she, she put a question towards the government on uh, when Spanish patients would be able to be prescribed uh, medicinal cannabis products. Because currently uh, it seems like uh, medicinal cannabis products are not uh, generally prescribed in, in Spain. Um, I know, as I said earlier, now they have a kind of a, a thriving cannabis community over there where there's clubs and uh, kind of networks like that where people are able to, to source cannabis and cannabis products quite easily. Um, still, they can't do it, though, with the like approval of the mainstream medicine, you know, and their GPs and what have you over there. So um, that, that's somewhat unfortunate. Um, but she put the question anyway to him when... When this would be, you know, when will the Spanish patients be able to get access to these medicinal cannabis act, uh, programs? No, geez, the, the medicinal cannabis products. <laughs> geez, I'm mixing uh, up the, the words there, but uh, medicinal cannabis products. Um, so they basically, the response from the government was there's insufficient evidence uh, to support the generalized medicinal use of cannabis. So there you go, like the, the Spanish government still hopping on that old age old kind of thing like oh there's not enough evidence there yet meanwhile there's thousands of people in their country who get access to the medicinal cannabis and they, they, they scream about the, the benefits that they get from it but you know i don't know that's not good enough for these guys um they'd rather continue wasting i don't know how much money they wasted in that operation and as i kind of pointed out like the, the danger they put the, the authorities there on, on the front of that boat who, who had to make that like jumping from vessel to vessel um crazy stuff like jump you know, stuff you see in the movies they're really and uh, all over what a bit of hash like it's ridiculous like if they just legalized and regulated it you wouldn't have this kind of carry on at all really like uh, and there wouldn't be lives needlessly be put at risk and patients needlessly suffering either um so look it's it's good to see that there is some sensible people out there uh, like joshua Gorosop um putting the right questions to governments uh, and sadly you know the, the response isn't uh it isn't uh, satisfactory but it is what it is like uh people need to be aware of you know why it is that people aren't getting access to medicinal cannabis yet um and it's because of this bloody myth that there isn't enough evidence and the main reason there's not enough evidence is because 70 percent of the studies to, into cannabis is to, to find out the harms of cannabis and only about 30 percent of them actually go into finding benefits so there you go, there, there's your reason why. Um, anywho, <laughs> we drive on, guys. The uh, next part uh, brings us to Mexico. Um, so Mexico is uh, in the news today because uh, they're looking to uh, pass a law in December um, related to the recreational use of cannabis. So in the last while there, they've been passing stuff um, around the medicinal use of cannabis and, and stuff. Um, so in Mexico, they, they have medicinal cannabis laws and, and what have you, but uh, they're going a step further now in December. And uh, it's, a, it's a good one anyway, because uh, I don't know if you're all aware of what actually goes on in Mexico, like, but Jesus, that place can be a bloodbath at times. And a lot of it fueled by the, the money that comes from drugs, you know, heroin, cocaine and cannabis there being a, used to be a big one. Uh, I think less so now. Um, than before since uh, America went on uh, legalized in certain states um, the cartels kind of went to other things like including avocados actually there, there was an interesting article out there on that um, but that was because of the legalization of cannabis in America re required less cannabis than coming in from these cartels in, in Mexico so hopefully now the Mexican government can go on further and legalize and regulate the sale of cannabis and um Hopefully, again, like they, they support the local farmers there and uh, the local entrepreneurs too. And it's not just like uh, big businesses coming in there as as has kind of been speculated might be the case um, with, with big businesses kind of positioning themselves there to, to benefit greatly off of the legalization of cannabis. And uh, again, like possibly small farmers losing out. Um, so like. I'll keep close eyes on Mexico there over the next while and uh, yeah, hopefully they'll have uh, good things coming out of them. Might get in touch with one or two activists there uh, as well and see if uh, 
we can get them on for a bit of a conversation. I was following one campaign they had there uh, about two weeks ago where they were bringing cannabis plants uh, onto the local subway and uh, public transport systems there in Mexico. So um, nice, uh, nice way to kind of just get people to see what cannabis is and the cannabis plants. Um, I know when I held uh, the protest there down in um, in the Fitzgerald's Park uh, the, by the skate park down below in, in Cork City, I, I, there was a cannabis plant down there um, and a lot of people for the first time got to see a cannabis plant. They got to come up, touch it, get pictures taken with it. Um, I actually should have had prepared her. I have a load of really cool photos from on that day with people with the plant. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a nice way for, for activists to kind of uh, break the stigma there around cannabis, just getting the plant out there and showing people that, look, this is just a plant you've nothing to be afraid of. If anything, the, the thing you've more to be afraid of are, are drug laws that kind of prop up uh, cartels uh, such as in Mexico and even here in Ireland, which are Kinahans, your Hutches and, you know, all the other guys who, who go there. But anyway, I, as I said, I'll return to, to this uh, in Mexico as we get closer to that uh, to that date in December. So onwards, guys. In, in other news... Um, Kind of sad news, actually. Um, it is the Foxworthy Farms. Um, they make the news there today, um, because um, their their farm was up in smoke there over the weekend, um, or during the week. Sadly, um, I had uh, a little thing to prepare to pop up here, but sadly, it's after getting a bit mixed up. I'll see if I can fix it out there in the background. But um yeah, they they were supposed to let's see if it'll transition over. Um they they were uh do 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 hang on a see now if you're seeing what I'm seeing. Are you no it didn't change. Okay, I'm just gonna forget about that for a second. But basically, uh, I'll read this out. I was gonna just show you the post that um was put up there by Foxworthy Farms, and it was showing some of the damage that was done there to the the farm um and to the home of uh, of Martin O'Brien, uh, the 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 farmer there on Foxworthy's farms. Um, so this is the post that uh, they have up here on their their Facebook page, Foxworthy Farms. So uh, check them out if uh, if you haven't yet already. But um. This is what he says. The glass fire hits home. Hashtag Foxworthy Farms. The glass fire came to visit and left its mark for sure. Most of the cannabis remains and the greenhouses were miraculously untouched. But we lost several buildings, including my home and the property. As you can see from the drone shot, the fire wrapped around the farm and left much of it intact with severe damage all around it. Uh, many of my neighbor or many of our neighbors were not so fortunate as the wildfire season has been one of the worst on record. I feel for animals and wildlife also. The watershed hasn't burned for one hundred years or more. Apparently, this is a healthy thing for the forest and animals and for regeneration. Obviously, that's a hard pill to swallow for people who have lost everything. We will move forward, rebuild uh, with love and positivity. We feel incredibly blessed and. Thanks to everybody who has reached out with support and positivity and love. If you wish to help in recovery, please donate to the Red Cross Wildstern Wildlife Fund. Um, and then he gives the, the uh, website there, which is uh, Red Cross slash donate slash Western dash wildlife dash donations dot HTML. So, um, yeah, if you, if you want to support there, he's calling for you just to give donations there to the uh, the Red Cross Western Wildlife Fund, Wildfire Funds. So um, that's our uh, buddies there at Foxworthy Farm. So um, just sending out love and support there to you guys. And uh, yeah, I will uh, do to hope uh, people will get out there and support you anyway. And uh, I hope you find your, your way back to your feet sooner rather than later. You know, um, terrible stuff going on out there with these wildfires. And yeah. Uh, yeah, as you say, the watershed hasn't burned there for 100 years. So like that's something to consider for the forestry management to be keeping an eye on, like as you've uh, quite a build up of uh, fuel around there. But look, that's something for, for others to get into. It's, a, it's an area of interest that I have myself, just from my own background actually, is uh, management of uh, forests and things like that. But um, yeah, that's Foxworthy Farms there, you know. Um, I would love to, to taste some of his uh, his cannabis, actually. It looks amazing. Uh, he does a great job there, and uh, he started promoting his farm recently up in, uh, on social media. I started following it, and I was really enjoying it. And uh, 
I hope he gets back to it sooner rather than later anyway. So uh, that's Foxworthy Farms, guys. Uh, one last time, Foxworthy Farms. Check them out on Facebook if you haven't already. So onwards, guys. Uh, from there, we go to um, other horrible news, actually. Um, yeah, I would... I, don't really I, I wish I could be more positive in this stuff, like, you know, but I suppose when you're reporting the news you have to give the good and the bad. And sadly, a lot of the times with cannabis, um, it's bad, especially when it comes to Ireland. Like uh, nine times out of ten the news coming from Ireland on cannabis is bad. But I, I think for Malaysia as well, like uh it's not any different, to be honest. And um here we have uh, this poor Malaysian man um who was sadly caught in possession of um 208 grams of cannabis like 208 grams of cannabis this guy was caught with and guess what his punishment was like do you think it's a life prison sentence in, in malaysia no this guy is getting sentenced to death he was caught back in 2018 um with 208 grams of cannabis in a food court and uh yeah he he wasn't able to prove that it was personal possession so they're like doing him for trafficking and dealing and um do you know as per section 39b um of the malaysian laws uh, no person shall on his own behalf or on the behalf of any other persons whether or not shall any person in malaysia traffic in any dangerous drugs I think they should wave it in this one. Like it's it's not a dangerous drug. Like come on, get off the stage. Um, it's cannabis. It's it's not a dangerous drug. It's dangerous if it's abused and misused. If it's in the hands of kids, um, you know things like that. If you know in the hands of kids and not under the supervision of ad adults, because I understand there are kids out there who need to use cannabis for medicine. So like there, there's a there's a reason for it all the time, but like this guy, like he's gonna sadly lose his life now. He's uh he was caught in twenty eighteen, so he spent now the best part of two years in a Malaysian prison, and just recently now they 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 kind of went ahead and uh, they're gonna send sentence him to death for this. Like this is sad, um sad. Like this is twenty twenty. Like something has to be done about this, like Malaysia, like okay, like uh, it's known that they're they're not the greatest guys, uh, in terms of like their their drug laws and everything, like but they're still killing people for hash and cannabis, like it's uh it's just brainless, like uh it's it's just sad. And it needs to end. And uh, you know, Malaysia, like where it is in the world, it's it's not too far from the next place we're gonna take a little journey to, which is um New Zealand, and, and you know, um, over in New Zealand, uh, we have here uh, coming up next, um, we have a Dr. Nina um, Sawicki. Sawicki? Um, geez, sorry again if I'm butchering your, your surname here. Um, I'm just going to quickly look at it here now again just to, to double check what it is. Um, New Zealand, uh, yeah, and Dr. Nina Sawicki. Um, so why this doctor is in my news piece today is um, she recently has quit the New Zealand Medical Association. Why has she quit? Uh, she has quit because the New Zealand Medical Association has taken a stance to vote against the upcoming elect or the upcoming vote on cannabis legalization in New Zealand. That's going to happen on the seventeenth of October. So not too far away that uh, just 15 days away from today. So I, again, I will return back to that and I'll be watching very closely as to to what happens in New Zealand. And, and again, maybe I might get in touch with a, an activist there and to have a discussion about that as we get closer to that date. Um, but this doctor has uh, taken it upon herself to quit the medical association because they're, they're against the legalization of cannabis and uh, she doesn't agree with why they're against it. Um, while she doesn't completely disagree with their position, she does disagree with why they're against cannabis legalization. And they're against it because, you know, oh, it's harmful, <laughs> you know. Um, but they completely overlook the, the harmfulness of prohibition on our society. Um, so props to this doctor anyway for taking a stand. And uh, I, I'm not too sure if there's other doctors there after taking a stand also with her. But um, I, I know there is definitely um, a muddying of the waters trying happening over there, you know, with medical associ associations like this trying to take a stance. And that can, 
um, mislead people because some people would think that the, the association, when they take a stance like this, that they're representing the views of, of all their members, but they're not. And, and even the medical association has come out uh, since the resignation of this doctor and um, and stating that, that look, uh, their stance actually isn't representative of all of their doctor's views because it, it is quite a mixed uh, bag of opinions there, I suppose. Um, I couldn't say like uh, where where it sways, whether there's more for or against, but there's definitely a mixed bag of opinions there. Like there's doctors who think it should be legalized, uh, and there's doctors who think it shouldn't be. Um, but uh, medical association coming out and taking a hard stance against something, um, you you would think they would have the unanimous support of their their members. Um, and again, it is incredibly misleading then to the uh, to the general public who would look at this group and think like, oh. I should follow this group because look, they're, they're the medical association. They surely know what's best for us. But sadly, like uh, maybe they've vested interests. Maybe their pharmaceutical buddies there kind of giving them the old backhander, brown envelopes. You know, maybe the New Zealand politics is a bit like Irish politics <laughs> um, when it comes to these quangos and medical associations and all of that crack. Um, but yeah, that that's New Zealand, guys. We um. I, as I say, I will return to New Zealand um, as we get closer to the uh, to the vote that they get to have there. Again, it's a it's a non-binding referendum. The government doesn't have to follow the, the what the citizens vote for. The citizens could vote for legalization. The government could not go ahead with it. They could vote against it, and the government could still go ahead with it. <laughs> so, um, it's it's an interesting one to watch anyway. That's for sure. And I would love to see something like that repeated here in Ireland. I would love to see. A non-binding referendum on these issues, you know, the, the legalization of cannabis, the decriminalization of the drug drug user, you know, may, maybe uh, opening up our methadone uh, treatment to include like a heroin assisted therapies where heroin is provided rather than methadone because methadone is a bit more harmful. But anyway, look, I digress. <laughs> Let's drive on with the 420 news, guys. And uh, up next, guys, uh, we're getting closer to home anyway. Uh, UK... So in the UK, there was a, at a train station there, um, I, I don't know uh, if you frequented a, a, a train station in the UK, but they've definitely stepped up security over there and they, they like to have drug dogs um, standing at the, the turnstiles when people are kind of coming and going from uh, the train station. Uh, it's quite an interesting tactic because uh, you have to walk past them, you know, so... Uh, and a lot of the times, like, um, these dogs aren't really going to find you out with cocaine um, or heroin, probably. Um, it's most likely going to be cannabis that they're going to find you with for obvious reasons, like, seriously, like, very obvious reasons. Um, cannabis stinks. Um, I don't know. I've never really gotten a smell off of cocaine. <laughs> um, drunkenly smelt it twice, I think, like, but... Uh, I don't think I ever got a, a smell off it, and I don't know if a dog can smell it either properly. So um, anyway, a dog uh, in the UK took his liking to some poor chap uh, leaving the UK, <laughs> leaving one of these train stations. Um, so uh, this was on January fifteenth of this year, and uh, it's interesting actually in the UK they're they're quite fat, much faster than the the Irish uh, justice system and getting people to court for stuff like. Uh, like kind of looking at their their cases there over the last few weeks, kind of reporting these. Um, seen an average like maybe three to, to six months kind of a, a waiting time for people. You know, it's a lot quicker like than the average in Ireland. It's nearly a year to two years for your simple possession ch- charges. But anyhow, this guy anyhow on January fifteenth, um, uh, he he was identified by dogs. <laughs> the dog said, "Hey, get that guy." Um, and when police officers went to speak with him, there was a, a smell of cannabis off him. So uh, they, they had a look in his uh, backpack and uh, they, they found a bit of cannabis on him. And uh, they went and searched his house then afterwards and found even more cannabis. So um, the total value of the cannabis that they found was uh, £1,200. Um, I, I don't know what the, the UK police value uh, per gram, but I, I'd imagine maybe he had four to five ounces of cannabis maybe six ounces let's say of cannabis um you know just for argument's sake um and uh what he got uh was a 10-month jail sentence that was suspended for two years 
he also had to pay a fine or a court cost of uh, £425. He had to spend a hundred hours of un he did do a hundred hours of unpaid work and sixteen days of rehabilitation um activity. So there you go, guys. That's in the UK. Like um like I was reporting on one there the other day and I thought it was like, oh that's not too bad, uh, a couple of plants and, and decent fines. Um but now here, like your man, a six month uh, sus- or ten month suspended sentence and uh suspended for two years or, or whatever it was, uh you know, and, and then a four hundred and twenty five pound fine on top of it and a victim surcharge then as well, like, you know. Um kind of ridiculous. Again, he's only crime carrying around a bit of cannabis, having a bit of cannabis at home. Um I don't know, maybe he who he lived with in the home, his parents' house, uh, it doesn't really say about it like but a lot of unintended victims there uh, in, in this uh, imagine his parents were at home, let's say this guy lived at home and uh next bang 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 in kicks the door like oh where's your uh your son johnny's room there uh we want to go up and search it because uh, we've him down in the play station there and we found him a cannabis on him and he's a drug dealer <laughs> like your mom's heart would drop probably like if she do, if she thinks you're uh, a little angel like you know my johnny wouldn't do that i don't know and um, it would break our heart because of the way people believe the stuff to be um yeah it it, it it's, I, again, as I say, I haven't, like, touch wood, I haven't ever been in there, like, when cops come and raid a house, but um, I wouldn't imagine it's too pleasant a situation if I was to extrapolate what they do from when they raided my cars. <laughs> yeah, I've had my car stopped and searched, like, over 50 to 100 times, lost count now at this stage, it's been so much. Um, but they're not they're not pleasant to deal with, they just pull everything out, leave everything scattered all over the car, and even if they find nothing... They're just completely disrespectful. They don't put nodding back. They leave you there at the side of the road until you have a good day and let you put back the pieces. It's horrible. It's just horrible to deal with anyway. Like so, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody to be honest. But um, yeah, that's the UK there where they use sniffer dogs at our their train stations. Uh, I don't know. Is that a, something that happens here in Ireland? I've definitely heard of it. Um, it, it's definitely not something I've seen myself. I, I've heard of it, but uh, it's kind of a, a rare thing, I think. Um, it was probably like uh, intelligence-led operations where they actually got the dog out and were waiting for a person or persons. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's a regular thing that they do like they do in the UK. Um, in other news in the UK, guys, um, we have a pensioner who, who made the news. Um, this pop smoking pensioner had a, a huge stash of up in his cupboard <laughs> so um yeah we had a, a pensioner in the uk who uh the, the cops went and uh raided his house sadly like uh, i i don't know what raided why they raided his house like you know the where the op- operating on a tip-off or something like you know um i don't know but they basically arrived up at this guy, guy's gaff and uh he had two thousand pound of uh, of drugs in the house. Like again, like let let's say ten ounces. Let's say he had ten ounces in his house. Um, he, what he said is uh, that he he bulk buys. He stocks it up, and uh, they went through his phone. They couldn't find any evidence at all that he's a drug dealer. So you know, it's it's an interesting case there. And the guy is sixty seven years of age. Like um, quite you know, pushing along like. This guy shouldn't be in front of a judge, like, like that cannabis is probably incredibly beneficial for him. Like at sixty-seven years of age, um, the 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 worst disease the body suffers with is aging, and to be pushing on to sixty-seven, like you know, it's it it's good to have a tool like cannabis uh, there to help with the stresses of life. Um, and now the cops have just taken that that source of uh of medicine away from him, uh, and they just added to the stress. Then, like you know. So taking away what would have been an antidote to the stress, like, and actually just doubling to tripling, maybe even, bloody, I don't know, tenfold increase in the, the level of stress now that this uh, pensioner has to, to go through, you know. Um, so he, he uh, let's see, his uh, case, uh, yeah, he, he was, again, bound to the peace for two years, you know. He, he wasn't uh, given any um, prison sentence or anything um, but if if he is to be found back in front of the uh, to the judge over the next two years, he'll come down heavy on him. Um, so yeah, your man then claimed while he was in court that look, he's been smoking it for thirty years, and he smokes one ounce a month. You know, 
he said that he's an addiction but i imagine that's something that he solicited or probably made him say like you know just just say you've an addiction there lad look you're, you're smoking a 30 years yeah but you're heavily addicted look yeah yeah um you know uh yeah, yeah he's uh uh, yeah, hopefully uh, he doesn't pop up uh, there in anyway over the next two years <laughs> for the cops. <laughs> uh, anyway, in, in other news there in the UK, um, the UK's most wanted guy, um, here he is. So this guy, um, Shazad Gafour, he's in the UK's most wanted list. And uh, not only that, but he's also listed as a, as a cannabis dealer. So um, something just to be aware of, like, you know, um, just be aware of what this guy looks like if you're in the UK. And, um, you know, if you're at risk of maybe buying cannabis from this guy, um, don't. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to get it back up here. I know what he was actually up for, but uh, he went on the run in a rent car and uh, he crashed with his family and and everything like you know and he's still on the run um i don't his crimes are included like he got caught with a pile of cannabis a pile of cocaine and uh yeah he's wanted by the police he's number eight in their most wanted and uh they're saying don't approach him you know he's dangerous but the main reason i actually wanted to put this guy in is because of that fact like, like this is the guy you're supporting if you don't know your source um when it comes to buying cannabis you know like a guy who's willing to take a high speed chase with his wife and young kids in the car come on like have a bit of respect like you know just just put your hands up you got caught like fuck's sake don't be putting your family at risk lad come on like that that's just stupid like like and obviously like he, he was caught with a load of cocaine and and, and uh, other stuff then as well like so when you're buying cannabis and, and you don't know your source uh, you could be helping prop up uh dealers who are selling other drugs too you know you might be helping tie the gap there uh, in funds uh, of somebody who's also selling heroin you know do you want to be doing that like not against the person like who sells heroin or whatever you know the, the heroin people have to get their, their heroin too i suppose um i don't condone it like i think our government should legalize and regulate it like but um I just don't think if if you're buying cannabis that this is what you want to be doing is uh, supporting these kind of guys who sell other drugs and take high speed chases with their fucking family and young kids in the car. Like, come on, like seriously, um, standards we need them. Um, anyhow, onwards we go, guys, and uh, we go from um the UK then uh to Belfast uh, to Northern Ireland, um. So in the Belfast, and again, guys, this links into what I was just saying, and know your source, guys. So uh, 80,000 pounds worth of drugs seized. So 80,000 pounds of um, cannabis seized. And, oh, yeah, 2,000 pounds of tablets, uh, diazepam. diazepam. Um, so there you go. Like uh, the, This was a bust that was done because they were watching uh, a drug op organization that were linked in with the, the uvf the ulster volunteer forces who are basically a paramilitary group uh, involved in fighting against uh, the unification of the, the north and south of ireland um i yeah that so that's the the uvf there um again do you know do you want to be supporting these guys like you know um these kind of guys who who basically like uh they're, they're a menace to society, essentially. Um, oh, go around his bally, his AK. Um, this is your paramilitary. This is who you're supporting when you buy cannabis on the street and you don't really know where it's coming from. Um, it's who you you could be supporting. Um, this is why I say to people, grow your own. Form grow collectives. Like, seriously, just know your source. Like, you know, try to buy from somebody who who can stand over where the cannabis is coming from like uh because as i say you don't want to be supporting these kind of groups and organizations at all and like and, and as i say this like uh, I, I have to point out like that i'm more afraid of these groups and organizations and others like them in ireland um than i am of our Gardaí because of what i do um essentially like you see here in this last slide like uh eighty thousand pound worth of cannabis like uh, a couple of months ago there there was uh 
3.2 million worth of cannabis being seized like and there was other millions worth of seized as well like uh you've groups like uh the udf you've the triads uh down south you've got the the other infamous gangs that i talk about um you know what i'm talking about is to try to take away these guys bread and butter i want to legalize and regulate an industry and bring it into the mainstream and essentially clean it of these criminals who use guns and violence to to prop up their trade you know um so do i fair gardy yeah slightly what are they going to do they're going to lock me up but to be honest like these these other guys would shoot me kill me like seriously and, and these are the guys that are out there selling cannabis and to be honest like you have to think about it like uh, if they agree with the Gardaí and uh, our policy makers that cannabis should be kept illegal have a think about that you know you have the UVF the 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 Kinnahans, the Hutches like none of these guys would ever want to see cannabis legalized because they make far far too much money off the criminal side of it when it's prohibited because they they buy it for pennies and sell it for for millions like you know it's 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 a credible markup that these guys make on drugs and they don't have to pay any taxes on it they don't have to pay a fair wage they don't have to do any of that stuff like if if they want to they, they could basically have a farmer grow a load of cannabis for them and then just go in and kill the farmer afterwards and uh they don't have to pay the farmer now they just own all his crop and all the hard work uh, because that farmer was a uh, a Vietnamese slave over here who didn't even have a passport and and probably didn't have a word of English to his name, probably some young sixteen year old like uh, sent over here by his family, um, who, who thought that he was coming to a better life and thought that money would have been sent home or something, you know, and instead he finds himself trapped in one of these houses where his passport and his uh, freedom to travel is taken off him, and that is a reality out there, guys, and this is the reality that you're supporting by continuing to to keep prohibition in place. So that's that's just uh that's it and um onwards we go guys and uh, the next thing I have for you is uh yeah I like doing these public service announcements so uh this is a public service announcement I have uh, brought to you by Merton's World <laughs> so today's public service announcement is uh, to all you guys out there who might have the munchies and who like to go to Subway um Subway's bread is not bread completely not cannabis related guys i know but look uh, if you got the munchies uh, i i know i love subway and i love the slap on that subway sauce oh yeah <laughs> so uh, sauce like oh that stuff is uh it's it's crack like oh yum and uh your, your mouths are probably watering out there now listening to me if, if you like it too uh, i know mine is starting to water but look their bread uh, an irish court has turned around and said it's not bread it's a uh, it's actually a confectionery if uh, if anything because of the sugar content it's got nearly 10% sugar, I think, uh, is the, the headline there. Um, so that that's ridiculous. 10% sugar and the bread is not bread. So uh, just be forewarned, guys, if you got the munchies and you're visiting Subway and he asks you, what bread do you, got, do you want? Just correct him and say, no, no, you don't sell bread, guys. <laughs> are you stoned <laughs> but um yeah there you go psa for the day subway bread is not bread <laughs> and onward we go back to more serious things guys ireland's news <laughs> um so ireland's news guys today uh, it brings us to uh the subreddit uh our crown uh, it's a, a subreddit i like to, to visit myself uh, quite a bit and uh this one caught my eye here um, this guy recently got caught with one joint in a pre-roll tube and uh, he got 10 months bound to the piece with no conviction um, if he stays out of trouble. He says that uh, he's happy enough with that seeing as uh, he is previous for personal and just got he's just got to be a good boy for, for the foreseeable. Um, so this is coming in there from uh, Dinny Boy 420 so uh, shout out there to Dinny Boy 420. Um, hope you're doing well and uh yeah i hope you're being a good boy <laughs> um, but yeah like that that's a heartbreaker like 10 month bound to the piece like uh like that's just unfortunate if he gets caught with another joint you now over the next 10 months uh he gets a conviction and he he gets i don't know what else he'll get with it but that's just shit now to be like if if he wants to have a smoke he's going to be so much more paranoid over the next few months it's just going you know, I, I don't know um he, he might just give it up for the next 10 months uh 
I don't know what the crack is. I I, I threw a thing out there, or a message out there from the, to get some comment back, uh, but um, I don't think I got a response on anyway, at least when I last checked. Um, so that was there from him. There was a few other comments up there then as well. Um, one actually from uh, Dinny Boy himself, and I, I'd like to just share it with yourselves because it's in par, it's on par with what I experienced myself too going to court. And me and Dinny Boy are in court for a very much uh, a similar thing. He got caught with one pre roll joint. That's exactly what I got caught with. Um, I had no tobacco in mine. Uh, I don't know if he had tobacco in his. But they valued mine at 10 euro. Um, again, I, I don't know what they actually valued his at, but uh, it doesn't say. But when he went into court, um, so it says here, look, uh, he went into court into the courtroom in a group of five. And four of them were up for personal cannabis. So only one other guy was there for something unrelated to cannabis out of a group of five. So four out of five were up for personal cannabis. Like that's that's just... ah. It makes me want to use bad words. <laughs> it's just really annoying. Like, come on, like four out of five people going in, like what? Are, like that's just way too high. Um, pardon the pun. Like seriously, when I went into court there in September, there was a group of six of us called in at the same time, and four out of the six of us, or possibly it was a five out of the six of us, were in there for personal cannabis. Uh, I left before I got to see what the last guy was in there for, but like five out of five when I got called, we're up there for cannabis, uh, personal cannabis use, like, so, I don't know, are they just bringing us all in together, or, or what, but there's some among the people going in, and, and then that, that kind of correlates then with what's out there in a, another article there from um, the Echo guys, uh, they basically have an, an article out uh, that the search, uh, the, the, the rate of uh, drug seizures has gone up, and, and is not any wonder, like, look, look at our cops now, right, they have nothing to do at night time. Nothing to do. So the nightlife is, is killed. Like, okay, sorry, I, I'll, I'll take that back. It's not that they have nothing to do. There's plenty for them to do. But they don't have the same, like, burden. Like, say, the way the city was. All the drunks, like, hanging around and all of this stuff. Like, and now it's kind of back into the communities where, like, you're having house parties and things like that that they have to deal with. But they're a lot more manageable um, they're a bit harder to deal with, I suppose, in certain regards, but they're a lot more manageable in that, like, when they arrive at maybe a house party, it's it's not a street full of drunk people that they have to deal with, you know? Um, you know, it's not 2 a.m. in the morning and everybody is out in the street all at once. Um, I know we're seeing repeats there recently of, uh, of it at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock when, when the bars are empty and in the city. But, um, yeah, you know, it's it's just... It's just weird that, uh, yeah, at this time now that all of these seizures are going up and a lot of it is cannabis-like. And then there, there's a report there that's out recently that's uh, looking at the potentials of cannabis and treating um, the, the symptoms of COVID. You know, there's an Israel company at the moment now that are developing um, an exosome. So it's, it's basically a... It's a way of delivering uh, CBD, and they're basically hoping that this is going to help with a uh, with kind of uh, the, the vasodilation of uh, of the lungs, um, you know, with reducing inflammation and things. They're helping people to breathe, but there's also shown potential that the the interaction uh, CBD has with the ACE two uh, pathway uh, receptors there in that pathway. Um, it can block the virus and uh, reduce the the rate at which the virus can actually inf in infect cells, you know. So again, and it, it improves our, our rate of being able to expel the the virus from our body. So that that's just crazy. Like that, uh, here we are, we're seizing it everywhere, and uh, in, in other places they're examining the, the medicinal benefits of it. You know, that was something I should have actually included there uh, today in that, that uh, but it was old news. It was going back from like uh, February, but it was just included in a, in a report that went out there by uh, helpeuropa.eu. Uh, so uh, the title there of that study is Medicinal Cannabis May Play a Significant Role During COVID-19. And that was published yesterday. So check that out, that one out if uh, if you are all interested, you know, into these studies that are looking at uh, cannabis and uh, the coronavirus. Um, there's quite a few of them being undertaken now at the moment. Um, again, just because of the the symptoms of the coronavirus and the benefits that uh, 
certain compounds in the cannabis plant, such as CBD and THC, can provide to patients. Um, and meanwhile, our, our doctors here buried their head in the sand. You know, we, we've nothing happening. We've a medicinal cannabis access program that nobody's getting access through. Um, they should be all be ashamed of themselves out there. Um, seriously, they really should. Our policymakers like that, they've really dragged their heels on this. Now we're in the height of a pandemic. We're heading. We're, we're in the, a recession, and yet still we're we're like uh, wasting tons of money, tons of resources, like uh, like very valuable resources too. Like our Gardaí are an incredibly valuable resource to our society, and we waste them. We waste them on people like me because of uh, of cannabis, you know. As of a bit of herb, like seriously, like um, ah, oh, like this stuff smells beautiful. Like it's ridiculous. Like this bit of herb, like this is we waste so much resources. Like it's ridiculous. Like some of the stats here, like in the north side, in the north of Cork, there were one hundred and sixty one detections, um, up from eighty nine in the second quarter of last year. So, like, you know, there, there you go, like, 161 detections, like, and that's just for drugs, like, uh, drug, is that for drug? Yeah, for personal use, that is, like, so detections of drugs for personal use and for drug dealing have rocketed during the pandemic, according to Garda figures. So this is just a little bit, bit here I'm reading from uh, the article from uh, Echo Live, um, written by Anne Murphy. So there, there's the, the figures released by the Central Statistics Office uh, show that there were 306 detections made in Cork City for drug dealing um, in the second quarter of this year, um, compared to just 193 in the same period of last year. So that was for drug dealing, actually, there. So there, it's up 160-odd. 160 so that, that's crazy, like... Um, however, in West Cork, the situation was the opposite, with the direction for personal use down from 93 in the second quarter to 54. So they're getting a bit less down in uh, in West Cork, you know. Um, so there, there's, there you go, like uh, the, the rate of detections in the city is going up. Um, that means that Gardaí are spending more time now dealing with drugs than they are dealing with real crime. Real crime, I mean crimes where like you're getting robbed where your aunt is after being at a mugged, having her handbag snatched down an alley, maybe being pushed over, maybe even being held at a knife point, or even worse, like a, a needle point, like by, by some of these people out there. Like, and, and yet our Gardaí are, are more interested in searching these people's pockets for, for drugs than they are for actually going after them for real crimes. You know, I was sitting down having lunch there at a... a it was a Bunsen a few weeks ago with my buddy and uh, we were sitting down outside and uh, these two undercover cops come walking down. Didn't know they were undercover at the time until they walked up to this homeless guy who was sitting there uh, begging at the side. And uh, they went and searched these pockets. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, it was just, it really annoyed me that day. I went and actually took a photo of the cops. Um, I have it there on my phone still. Should share it here too with you. Like, but uh, the two undercover cops, like, and they went through your man's pockets. Like, Young was sitting there like uh, he he was probably younger than myself, uh, like mid twenties, I'd say early twenties, and um, they they went through his pocket. He he had a cup in front of him with a bit of spare change, and uh, they were searching him for drugs. Like uh, unfortunately, um, just more victimization. Like uh, they shouldn't be getting this guy up off the floor. All to be searching him if anything, just to get him up to help him, like to offer him a real helping hand, and not to just victimize him. Um and use them as, a, as another number uh, to climb the bloody uh, the ranks and their career ladder there, as some guards do. As I said, these were two undercover plainclothes officers. Like So these guys pray. I mean pray. Like they, they, they use these guys as victims like uh, to climb the career ladder. They don't care as to the effects of uh, the, the work that they do when they're out there. As I say, searching homeless people, like, you know, that's that's kind of the lowest the low like that a guard can really go like is to search a homeless person at the side of the street for for drugs, like seriously, it's just sad. It it really is sad. Like um, and, and it's just not what we should be doing at all in our society. And the longer we do it, the the more harm we're going to be uh, doing on our society. And um, 
yeah guys that that is um the 420 news for today sadly there's not much actually to report uh from for else from ireland uh there is the guys over at um i'm just going to get my thing green green lens media i think is their uh greenlensblog.com so they recently interviewed uh barry who is uh who's a local activist here in cork uh, you might have met him um i'm gonna get a yeah he's barry is the name he gave her anyway so um you might have met him if you were in around the city or he might have actually called to your front door uh, in cork uh, he was the, the guy behind the letters being sent to um to michael martin or taoiseach um so that that was him so get over there check that out uh green lens blog um just double check that greenlensblog.com so uh there's an interview up there that uh, they carried out with uh with barry and um yeah check it out uh there's there's a lot going on actually in the cannabis community there in ireland like uh there's a lot of kind of momentum building like and uh, i hope to see that that continues to, to go, grow you know, um, I know it's been very hard for us to do things because of this whole coronavirus and the pandemic. Uh, it really blew, took the wind out of our sails. Uh, we were, I was hoping for an amazing 420 this year because uh, the whole month was 420, which was a great opportunity. Like I had uh, a few things planned. Sadly, it didn't materialize because of the coronavirus. Like uh, we, we have to take that one back, uh, I think, going forward. Um but yeah, shout out to, to everybody there in the cannabis community in Ireland. Uh, shout out to the guys at Major Smoke Up as well. Um, hope you're all doing well, guys. I uh, hope to see something coming from yourselves there uh, in terms of maybe even another little uh, online thing there that you did uh, where you were passing the uh, the blunt. Uh, just have a bit more fun. Keep the, community, the spirit alive and uh, the flame burning strong there in the community. So guys, that's, uh, that's it for me. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's uh, 420 News. I'll uh, quickly flick on over there to the uh, to the comments section and uh, see what's happening out there with you guys. Um, so let's see what kind of hiccups I had with today's show. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, first comment here from Dave. Anyway, the video works. Yes. <laughs> Happy days. Nice one, Dave. And uh, thanks for tuning in today again. But um, it's always great to, to have you along. And Teresa again, you know, uh, another uh, loyal listener there to the, to the live show of, uh, of Martin's World for, uh, here on Facebook. So uh, it's lovely to have you uh, along, Teresa, and uh, thanks for your comment there. Let me know. It's all good. Um, Stephen Garland, as the, the Dutch industry is uh, tightened up, uh, all the growers have uh, migrated south to Catalonia. Um, Spain, me meanwhile, still run by right wing. Okay, yeah, I, I forget about that uh, thing there with Spain and Catalonia, actually, and kind of having a bit different. Um, but, yeah, uh, nice one there, Stephen, for your input as well. Uh, thanks very much for uh, setting us out there with that. Um, hopefully you might get over to you soon, actually, Stephen, as well. Maybe Martin's World might go on tour there to Barcelona very soon. Um, a business-related trip, obviously, um, because we can't go on holidays right now um, and all that. Um, King Green, prefer trips to Barcelona, as they say, yeah, man, might, might be heading soon, maybe. Prefer trips to Barcelona compared to Amsterdam, but right now we uh, we can't go abroad, no holidays this year. Yeah, man, uh, we can't go abroad on holidays, but um, I think uh, we can still do some essential work-related uh, trips, and uh, I can't interview any cannabis growers here. Um, maybe I can in Barcelona, so it might make my trip essential. <laughs> um yeah, Dave says here he won't be bringing a plant on a bus anytime soon. <laughs> Maybe some time. <laughs> and uh, Dave also says, uh, in Asia, most uh, countries say that drugs are a crime against the country and community in their eyes anyway. Yeah, that's kind of like some who some people see it here as well, sadly, like that by you using drugs, like you're bringing down the community and, and all of that. Like, you know, think of the children. <laughs> And uh, Ken here as well. Uh, I was caught in the UK. Please give uh, oh, that stupid pop up. <laughs> um, Ken's comment. I, I was caught in the UK. Please give a warning and let me on my way with my weed. Wasn't much though. They probably couldn't be arsed uh, with the paperwork. Yeah, there's a lot of paperwork as well, man. That's the same here. Um, I was surprised like that they caught me with a joint and they, they went ahead and done it. Like obviously it wasn't a busy day for them. Or maybe they just wanted to, to do these uh, soft cases, you know. Easy work for them, like, you know. 
Um, and Ken again, uh, many don't give a shit about uh, the source, just the quality. But yeah, that sadly is the case, man. People don't give a shit about the the source. But um, do you know, I have to do my part and hopefully raise awareness there to the hopefully just to help people to give a shit and maybe to just spark that uh that inspiration to go and start growing their own <laughs> um grow your own guys it's it's you know it's it's the way forward like the guys I, that i know who do it um yeah it's it's amazing and, and just to, to go on further on that when i worked in the grow shop in cork honestly the amount of people who are actually growing in cork it's it's ridiculous um if the cops were to carry out a raid one raid a day they would be busy for the next two to three four or five years uh who knows uh but there's definitely more than a year's worth of uh of raids out there like it's a needle in a haystack tight lips you know and uh, all will be well a, a well sealed tent uh, some good ventilation a, a very good carbon filter uh, some lights pots soil seeds and you're on your way guys that's all you need if you have any more questions uh, i'm happy to help you out <laughs> um ken uh yeah thanks again again ken for your uh, your comments there uh Andrew says, some areas in the UK, especially around London, aren't too heavy-handed with it. They take down a grow house, but go easy on uh, stops when just small personal amounts. At the same time, uh, I've seen them out with dogs at Candom Tube Station around 11pm on weekend nights. The UK drug drug laws are haphazard. I got a caution back in 97 when I was caught rolling outside the Red Eye and King's Cross was a funny night <laughs> fair enough it's good that you can look back and, and laugh at that now anyway andrew um and thanks again for your comment there i see that's a reply there to ken as well so uh yeah and it is good that the uk um police do show a bit of discretion when it comes to the personal use uh, at least uh sometimes and uh there's more replies there from the lads uh I'm painting, so not too much chat there from uh, from Teresa. <laughs> nice one, Teresa. And she says also, great show as always. And guys, uh, as I see there, we're coming close to one hour. And I want to keep this under 60 minutes for uh, my fans there over on Instagram. Because uh, if I go over 60 minutes, it just creates a nightmare trying to post this up on uh, on Instagram TV. So guys, uh, thanks very much for uh, for tuning in. Thanks everybody there for your comments. Uh, always, As always, much appreciated. Um, one final thing just to throw out there guys uh, as a reminder over on martinsworld.ie uh, I have a link up there where people can make donations with bitcoins at the moment and I also have set up a patreon um, and what I'm looking to do is trying to raise funds to open up a, a, a cannabis activist hub here in Cork um, and also exploring looking at doing like a, a non-profit cannabis cafe um, in order to kind of fund this uh, cannabis activist hub but again, I, I believe we need a, a physical pl- space for us to kind of come meet, organize and plan things out, hold meetings and workshops. And I also want to set up a little uh, studio inside there for other people who, again, like myself, uh, want to create content um, to help with uh, the, the fight for the legalization of cannabis in, in Ireland. So if you can at all, guys, get over there, show your support for uh, for those two things, uh, the Bitcoin donation and uh, the, the Patreon uh, as well. The Patreon is uh, patreon.com uh, forward slash Martin's World if anybody is looking for that link. Again, all the money, guys, will be used for renting location and uh, for fitting it out with anything that needs to be put into it. None of that money will be going into my pocket if anything money is coming out of my pocket for this project. So uh, any support at all will be much appreciated, guys. So uh, as always, guys, uh, keep her lit, stay blessed. Keep our country. <laughs> this is uh, Martin Condon from Martin's World signing off. Peace.